Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 12th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier this weekend found a real neat obfuscated PowerShell script. When you look at it, you really only see parentheses, brackets, dollar symbols. Remember vaguely seeing something like this with JavaScript, but here it's a PowerShell and the file itself is being distributed as part of an MSIX package. MSIX packages are a Windows packaging format and it comes with a config file that will tell you basically what scripts to run to install the particular package. Well, this obfuscated script was a part of it. And uh, well, if it's obfuscated like this, it pretty much has to be malicious. Xavier walks you through the interesting deobfuscation here for this particular PowerShell script and then how to arrive at the actual loader, the URL, the second stage is being uh, pulled from. Interesting obfuscation method and even more interesting tricks here on how to deobfuscate some PowerShell script like this. A couple of readers pointed out that I didn't yet include a blog post by Wolncheck about too many honeypots or how do you really say here in their headline, there are too many damn honeypots. Of course, this is a topic that's of interest to us here running honeypots. And what this is really about is that uh, researchers posting lists of vulnerable servers and they take as an example here confluence servers that uh, well, uh, these researchers have to be more careful when they are making claims as to how many of these confluence servers are actual confluence servers and not honeypots and the author here jacob binds isn't necessarily even talking about like someone setting up a full featured Confluence server. But uh, the honeypots that are being excluded here are honeypots that are pretty easily discoverable as honeypots. They don't offer all the files and will in some ways actually behave like some of the honeypots we would deploy for something like Confluence in that they only really offer a couple of critical URLs. So they certainly are discoverable as honeypots if you just spend a little bit more effort and don't just copy paste the result from Shodan. Shodan is a valuable tool in order to discover vulnerable systems, but it's not really a great tool in order to enumerate a good quantitative exposure to a particular vulnerability as first of all, there are some networks that will outright block Shodan. And yes, there are honeypots or even just non-functional installs of the software that well are not really vulnerable. And then we have an interesting vulnerability in Clam AV. Clam AV, an open source antivirus product, it has the ability to trigger a message whenever it does detect malicious content. Well, this message is basically just a shell command. The name of the file that the malware is contained in is passed to the shell without any proper uh, sanitation. So a well selected file name will lead to arbitrary code execution. This vulnerability was found by Amit Shandl and uh, it he also made available a proof of concept uh, exploit for this vulnerability looks uh, pretty straightforward uh, to exploit. So certainly something that you need to pay attention to in particular, since this can also be used then to run commands as root if clam AV runs as root, which it sometimes does in order to be able to reach all the files that you would like it to scan. Patches have been made available by Clam AV. It's one of those tools that you often sort of find included in some third party mail gateways and such. So uh, make sure that you got them covered. And ExpressVPN released an update that fixes a DNS leak in its application. These type of leaks are sadly somewhat common in VPN solutions where some DNS traffic is being routed directly and not being passed through the VPN. This was apparently also a split tunnel 
problem where you have either multiple VPN solutions or only use the VPN solution for some of your traffic. This is always a tricky and dangerous proposition. You should route all traffic through the VPN and also, if possible, only run one VPN at a time in order to not have any confusion between the different VPNs and and which traffic is using uh, what VPN and also never a bad idea to double check any vendor claims and just collect traffic that's not passing through the VPN yourself. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for those of you who alerted me of the story about the honeypots. If you have any stories that I missed, uh, please, please let me know. And uh, that's it for today. Talk to you again tomorrow.